Yummy looking food. Um, do you happen to recognize this kanji? Yes. Cha iro. Perfect. What Brown. color is that? Nice. And next word is tapuri. Tapuri is an adverb. So sometimes adverbs will end with D. This is also relatively common. So you got the ku, uh, ni, to, and ri is also about. These are the most common, ku, ni, and to. And these are basically conjugation rules. And D, there'll be these random things are just our kind of adverbs that will end with D on its own. Um, tapuri is like a large amount. So it's like a lot. Tapuri. Tapuri. Can you read the sentence for me? Cha iro no kawa wa oi. Good guess. Ni... Actually, mm. ni oi. Ni oi ga suru. Perfect. The brown skin have a smell. Perfect. And last time you learned about um, kosho ga kakata, which, what did that mean? Do you remember? Well, not last time, a while ago. Ga kakata. Kakata is to, like, to put on, to envelop. Basically, yeah. Shou ga. Oh, no, ko shou. Ko shou. Hi. This is pepper. So kuru ko shou is like black pepper. Ah, that's it. So kuru you can also use the same kakata with bata. So bata ga kakata basically means a bunch of butter on something. Just like. A bunch of black pepper. Kakata. Kuro kusho. Hi. And next is teka teka. We have seen teka teka before. Last time the main character was fantasizing about food. But this means glistening. Teka teka tosuru. Teka teka. Um, teka teka teka. Teka teka. Um, the next thing we're looking at is aru. So sometimes rather ah. than having something in passive form like kakara, ka, kakarete iru, You'll have and said kaite aru. Um, they're basically the same thing. Like a lot of times it's relatively kind of illustrating the same idea, but the main difference is kind of what you're focusing on. So kakarete iru kind of insinuates you kind of have an idea of who the author is, who wrote something, in other words. For example, if you were talking about the legend of Gen Genji or whatever that shows called i can't remember that fairly famous book you might say oh this was written back in that time about blank so you'd have this you'd have the passive form because you have some idea of who could have wrote it but if you are really not talking at all that someone could have wrote this you might use kaite aru for example if you were talking about a stop sign and you're saying something's written on the stop sign like the word stop <laughs> that'd be kaite aru Rather than kakarate iru. Um, so right here, it basically, when you see the aru, you're 100% not focusing on, at all, on the fact that someone could have done this. Uh, so, um, can you do me a favor and read the sentence below for me? Nani ka ga futte aru. Hai. So this is the same furu, like ame ga furu, to fall down. But the idea of this context is that something has been sprinkled onto something is when this would come off. So it's like, oh, this is sprinkled on it. It would be the something ga futte aru. This has been sprinkled. So mm. perhaps sprinkles themselves would be sprinkled ga futte aru. If you like bought a cake from like the grocery store, for example, you don't know who made the cake, who put the sprinkles on it, but you want to say, oh, look, there's sprinkles on this. I see. Hi. So let's go read our line from the book. Chaga ah, Chagai mo ni wa bata ga Aburi kakate ite Teka teka shita chai iro ah, Kawa no ue ni Kuro ko sho ga fute aru so our subject is this jagaimo. And this is old basically describing it. So what's the first piece of information we're given about this jagaimo, this potato? The first thing is bata ga taburi kakate ite. So we say that taburi is to uh, sprinkle on. That's actually furu. 
Oh, oh. That Tabu- booty is a large amount. Uh, yeah, like right, a right. Big right. scoopful. Tabuti. So the first piece of information is there is a bunch of butter on the chagaimo. Exactly. And Hi. um teka teka shita. Teka teka. It's a uh, what is it? Um, kind of glistening. Glistening. Okay. Glistening brown color skin on top. Okay, so the second piece say on top of the glistening brown color skin is sprinkle black pepper. Exactly. Uh, some fancy jagaimo you just got. Some fancy hot potato. Well, potato. Okay, this is a kanji check. Do you remember how this guy's read? Narabe. Narabe. Perfect. Uh, yes. And the guy on the top? Mise. Perfect. And this guy? Kakete. Kakeru. Um, it's not kakeru, but it does have to do with cooking. This is yakeru. Yakeru. Hi. To cook something. Our next word is hamidase. This basically means to stick out, to protrude, kind of at least like just out there where it probably shouldn't be. Hamidase. Hamidase. So we've seen a lot of this word that starts with shu. Do you know how it ends? Jin. Yep, Shujin. This is the owner of like a store. Hi. So let's go read this sentence. Kichigo. Okay. Kichigo ga hamidasta. Hi. Right. So this Kichigo in English is called a raspberry. Hi. Kichigo. Ichigo ga wa. I mean, the uh, raspberry is protruding out of the pie. Exactly. That's 100% what that sentence says. Our next thing right here is oku, which is to place something somewhere. So that's what oku looks like. Oku. Um, can you read the sentence for me? Shujin wa sara o okoi oku. So it's oite ita. Hi, perfect. Oite ita. What does that mean? Um, the owner placed the plate. The owner place. Yeah, that's what it say. Yep, the owner placed yep. the plate. Yep, the owner placed the plate. Perfect. Boop. Um, our next word is sato gake. This is the same gake from kakiru, that verb. And so it's the same kind of be lathered in right here. This is something lathered in sato, which is sugar. So this basically means to be covered in. So these are just a bunch of random things from my Google image that I grabbed of just a bunch of things with sugar covering them. So sato gake, this means covered in sugar. How's like a covering? Hi. It's like how the potatoes are covered in butter. Yes. Um, do you know what sugu means? Sugu, quickly. Yeah, sugu. Now a lot of times ni will be added to that. Sugu ni. Sugini. Hi. So let's go read this sentence. Sugini sato ga. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Sugini sato ga gake no pai no sara o oita. Perfect. What does that mean? Okay. This say that quickly. Um. Sugar. A coated pie. Plate. Yes, a sugar-coated uh, pie. Yes, he quickly play, place the plate of sugar-coated pie. Yes, perfect. And next is modoru. What does modoru mean? Modoru, to return, perfect. to return something. Uh, no, that'd be kaisu. Modoru ah, is this to one is, return. I return, yes. the subject return. Yes. Can you read the sentence for me? Shujin wa modota. The owner return. Yes. So moduoru happens when a living thing returns to some kind of location that is not their home. So that's when modoru shows up. You have a different verb if a sound is returning on its own and if you return something else. Um, so there's 
there's basically there's four types of returning in Japanese. There's I'm returning home, I return to a location, I return something to a location, and some non-living thing returns on its own somehow. Like perhaps like an automatic library book. But um mm. yeah, so there's there's four. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Um okay, let's go read this sentence then. Shujin wa suguni. Modote kita ki chigo ga hamidasta sato ga sato ga ke no pai no sara mo oite itta. Yes. So Perfect. two parts. First part is the owner quickly. Went back. Uh, he returned because earlier the owner had gone to the back room to cook in the kitchen, right? Yes. And then he's come back with food and then he left and now he's so he's come back, he come back again to us. To us. And now he has a different plate, right? Because he can only carry so many things at once. I see. So he came back to us and then the second part is he placed it he placed a a plate of pie that is sugar coated um with the um ichigo kichigo sticking out of it exactly a raspberry kichigo and that is the end of this set so now we're switching over to this set like so Mm -hmm. You're now two percent through this book. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you happen to know what Tokoro means? Tokoro is a place. Yes, it does is a place. So when someone says sore dokoro janai, it means this is not the place for that. So this is not the place. Sore dokoro janai. And it also kind of insinuates it's not the time for that. Um so it has both because tokoro means place and time. So this isn't the place, and it's not the time for that. Can you read this word for me? Harapeko. Hi, to be hungry. Harapeko. Um, can you read this sentence for me? Dorobo wa nani ka itta. What does that mean? The thief say something. Perfect. And let's go read a sentence from our book. Neburi ga nani ka itta kedo. Harapeko no ore wa sore dokoro janai. Okay, so neburi nani ka itta kero. Neburi say something, however. Harapeko no ore wa I was hungry. Sore dokoro janai. This is not a place yeah. for this. So in the context, what's kind of been dropped in a way is it's not the time and place for me to be listening to whatever he's saying. I'm too, I'm too like, there's some hungry and there's food in front of me. This is not the time to be talking to me, is basically what he's saying. So I, see. Talk about I see. So next about is kiru. Which is to cut, and this is an u verb, not a do verb. So r plus u, kiru. Kiru. And can you read the sentence for me? Hai. Foku o toto toru. I take up a fork. Yes, I take up a fork. Perfect. And what's this word right here? Kiru. Perfect. Cut. Nice. So here's a new onomatopoeia, but let's go read the sentence. Gaimo o setos. Sesetto kita. Yes. So seset is basically means to do something diligently or careful. Sese. Sese. <laughs> How do you know all these words without kanji? Do you look it up on a, in the dictionary? Sometimes I look it up to tell you what word they mean, but in general, you can kind of just, if you watch a lot of anime, normally you can just kind of guess what they mean. <laughs> is it? <laughs> Yeah, the sound, the sound, just go. Um, to do it diligently. But, but yeah, sometimes I'll like double check them to make sure I don't give you like a weird definition. <laughs> but like definitely the and those type of things are definitely 
<laughs> definitely just get into ya. Um, the next word it is hitasu, which hitasu. is to soak into something. Has that nice water radical in here to soak. To soak. So, so how the would, fondue. Yeah. So how would you say to soak a potato? Yagaimo o. Yep. Hitasu. Yep. To soak a potato. Perfect. What is the must form of kiru? U verb. So it is kirimas. Perfect. Kirimas. Nice. So kajiru with this kanji basically means the gnaw on something like the the chew on something. Kanjiru. Um, and it is an u verb. Kanjiru. Kajiru. Kajiru. Um, how would I say to soak up potato in butter? Mm. Butter ni. Yep. That's it. Perfect. And this is the good word that came from kab. Uh, the, the, it wasn't kaburi. It was something else. Ka, kajiri. Um, kajiri can turn into kaburi tuke to mean to bite into. So to kaburi. attach gnawing. Kaburi tuke. Bite into. So originally it's kajiri. Yeah, kajiri. And it's turned into kaburi tuke. Hi. Yeah, I'm not sure like how that happened because kaburu is not a word. <laughs> like, it came from kajiri. It's just kind of funny. So so to bite into it. Um okay, so how would you say to bite into a potato? Jagaimo into a potato. To bite a potato. Kaburi tsuita. Perfect. Nice. And our next word, can you read this for me? Omoi kiri. Perfect. Omoi kiri, um, specifically as an adverb, has the meaning of to do it the most you can, like with all your power, basically. So it's kind of doing your 100%. Moi kiri. Like all that thinking in there. There's no, it's like kind of like it's so much you don't even think. Cut the thoughts. Yeah, Just cut do it. it. Omoi kiri. Cut the thoughts. Just do it. To try hard, right? To try yes. some, to do something very focused. Kind of not really about focus. It just means like, uh, for example, he says he says omoi kiri kaburi tuita. So he bites like, <laughs> not like oh, I'm being super focused necessarily, but he's just like uh, really aggressive. He really, he he's hungry. He's <laughs> yeah. He's eating. Okay, got it. Boku o hotte sesete. Jagaimo o kiri bata ni hita shite omoi kiri kapuri suita. Okay, I'm gonna break this down. First part is foku o tote, take up a fork, sesete to, to do it diligently. Uh, jagaimo o kiri, he cut, he cut the jagaimo. And then, bata ni hitaste. Now, this hitaste is um, to dip into, right? Kind of. It's specifically to soak. To soak to, into. But that could be related. You could soak something by dicking it. It's just the act of the... Hitaste. Like butter is just something you can kind of just soak it into it. <laughs> so, bata ni hitaste. Soak the butter. Soak it, soak with it with butter. Yes. And then, omoe kiri, omoe kiri kaburi tsuita. He bite heartily into it. Yes, he bites with all his might. So he, he really aggressively bites in this. And just letting you know, in case you were confused, the seseto modifies the next verb. There's it's basically the way how adverbs work kind of especially with toll and stuff is that with Japanese if it, it, it attaches to whatever is the first verb that comes after it so since it comes this is not since tote is done so nothing's going to be modifying tote anymore because things don't happen after verbs so seseto is just continuing to do that to kiri just, just in case you were confused because because you defined I... it but you didn't like to find it together so. I see hi um, next, passive form. So we actually had this exact same slide before. How do you think you say you in passively? Like rather than saying to say, 
it becomes I was told or someone else said to me. Iwa, Iwa. Ooh, ah, ooh, ah. My hint is that it is a little bit irregular because of this. Iwa. Yep. Iwareru. Yep, Iwareru. This is true for all verbs that end with just u at the end. They'll become blank wa de do rather than a de do. Passive. Yes. Iwareru. Do you happen to know this kanji? Ichi no or inochi. Yeah, inochi. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you know, no. I was like, you know, I was like, that ha sounds like it has all the right sounds. <laughs> I was like, frozen. Uh, you know, tea, yes, life. You know, tea. Hi. And that's actually you know, the reading I wanted. Yeah. <laughs> you know, money, this is this is real stupid, but, um, you know, since Japanese is a foreign language to me, so okay. sometimes <laughs> I just had all the sound and then it get, it get jumbled up. And sometimes yeah, other words. Everybody jump into the word that I'm learning too. Mm -hmm. like if, if it happened to sound similar. Happens to everybody. I, I saw me with mitsukeru and mitsukaru. I mean, I guess it's the same word, but like, I got them so confused. Um, Can you read the sentence for me? Majitsu shi wa ichi no or inochi, inochi ga aru. What does that mean? Um... The 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 magician. Oh, and the magician have life. What is this? Yeah, that's it is. It is the magician has life. You probably wouldn't really have the blank wa blank gadu. Normally, this would be like attack. So you know, chigadu majitsushi would be the magician that has life. Uh, would be more natural. You don't you you tend to not to have it in a full sentence. This is a but this is a common relative clause. Hi. Have a life. Um, have a life. As in, he actually is busy with something. He's not just a bum. <laughs> and, <laughs> or, <laughs> I'm not sure uh, that you would use ikiru for that, actually, I think. <laughs> ikiru tends to have that to live type of meaning rather than just to survive. <laughs> okay. Uh, that that would be more like in a fantasy setting. Maybe like some of the magicians are liches and you say might say they don't have a life or something. <laughs> okay. But hi. Uh, can you read this word for me? Inochi o subao. Ubao. Ubao. So ubao means to take or like to steal something kind of. Um, so in this context, it means basically to kill somebody. Your life is taken. Inochi o ubao. To, have a, ubao. to take a life. Life is mine now. Um, how do you think you make passive form from ubao? Ubawareru. Perfect. Ubawareru. Nice. So, can you read the sentence for me? Hi. Dorobo ni inochi o ubawareru. Hi. So, this ni, this is who's doing the stealing. So, the thief takes somebody's life. Whose Hai. life it is, not specified. Could be his own life. Who okay. cares? Probably not his own life. But uh, that's how it works. So, ni marks the doer of stealing. Hi. And here's a new word. Do you happen to know it? Yes. Very familiar. Looks like the word a attack. It does or... look a lot like also, but this is um odo odo. Odo. Like two. Now, now I'm like, do I remember this word? It sounds like I, that I, word in I'm invading a castle or no like, it's infiltrate. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's odoroku, and then it just it was surprisingly long. Odoroku, yeah, odoroku is what it is. Odoroku, and it means um fear to be to be surprise. Odoroku, not fear, um, but surprise. Surprise. Hi, bikuri. Okay. Odoroku. Odoroku. Uh, can you read the sentence for me? Dorobo wa odoroita. Nice. The thief is surprised. Um, can you read the sentence? Ore wa inochi o subawarete shimao. Ubawarete. Ubawarete shimao. Hi. So my life has been taken from me. Ah! Oh no! Shimao! So maybe a ghost might say that. Mm. 
Life is taken. Uh, can you read this? Odoroki. Yes, odoroki. So odoroki on its own can be a noun right here. Nice, a noun. A really example of a silly sentence is this one. Odoroki da. Dorobo wa odoroki da. So this right key that you're adding is not above the kanji. So you, right here it's good, odoroki da. But right here it's not odoroki da. It's just odoro, odoroita. Right, so odoroita. Perfect. So what does the sentence mean in English? The frightened thief. Surprise. Yeah, the, 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 the surprise thief is surprise. That's what it says. Um, uh, the surprise is surprise. So yeah, it, it just is a funny sentence. Uh, it's kind of like people die when they are killed kind of <laughs> sentence. Um, odoroita dorobo wa odoroki da. Um, ima now means even now. So it actually sounds weirdly similar to the English word. Ima now. Ima, ima now. now. Right now. What is it again? I'm sorry. Uh, even now. Even now. Ima right. now. Ima now. Even <laughs> now. Okay, it's I got it. It's obviously similar. <laughs> um, so, uh, can you read the sentence for me? Ima now. Dorobo wa. Odoro kida kida. So even now the thief is surprised. It's surprise. So so surprise, surprise. Um, do you remember what mo plus te form tells us? Nigio toshtemo mukaini suwata neberini sugu chikama chao. Ooh. Toshtemo. And then another verb. Right. So even as I did this. Yes. Even is exactly what that means. So this even if still this... happen. Yes. Exactly. Perfect. Okay. Our next adverb is mamonaku. And mamonaku. it comes from Ida, like time. So basically it means to have no time, but it doesn't mean literally there is no time, but it means super soon something's going to happen. You're going to run out of time, basically. You don't have any extra time, basically. Mamonaku. Mamonaku. Hi. Okay. That mo there meaning more of something without. Mm. Right? Mo. Naku is don't have. Naku is like don't have, yeah. And ma it's, is it's like time. Like, mo sometimes has an even meaning. So it's like you don't even have time. You don't yes. have e even more time, maybe. <laughs> that, that, yeah. That's kind of where it comes from. Mm -hmm. um, hi. So let's go read from our book. Neburi wa oreo nitsu mete iru. Yoi ka. Kozo. Omae wa. Mamo naku. Washi no. Mado seki ni. Inochi o. Uba ware ru. Koto ni naru. Ima nao. Inochi ga aru dake demo odoro kida. Hi, so let's start with our first sentence. Okay. Nobody wa ore o mitsumete iru. Nobody wa ore o mitsumete iru. Saw me. Even. Where did even come um, from? I'm so sorry. Um, seeing. Um, Nobody saw me. Plus. That'd be neburi wa ore o mita. How is mitsumeru a little bit different than miru? Oh, he's staring at me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> neburi stares at me. And then. Neburi stare at me. What is and then he next? say, and then he say, yoika. Like, how good. That's a good, good. guess. It, yoika, that's literally what it is, but it's basically like the same in English, like, well then, boy. <laughs> well yoika. then. It's kind of like, listen to me. It's like kind of what that is. <laughs> I see. Yoika kozo. Ah, uh, my oh my wa you, mamonaku. You don't have time left. Yep. You're running out. You're running out. Um, washi no mado seki ni, my magical stone, inochi o ubawareru koto ni naru. So the life 
uh ubawareru again is ubawareru means uh just learn it ubawareru it's to oh. take something to take something okay so my magical stone will take the life of you koto ni naru that it will become yes so you will soon uh my magical stone it will take the life of you, of you It's ima super soon. yeah soon yeah so the mamonaka is modifying the this when it's going to do it so soon as like So soon is kind of like the mamonako. So soon Minaru. it will soon become come. that the my magical stone will take your life. I now okay. now he's talking about himself. So now he's the subject of that's the second period part of the end sentence. of sentence. Next sentence, yeah. ima nao inochi ga aru dake de mo. Even now, the life. Still have, however, da da ke demo da ke demo. Okay, I'm gonna have to come back to that one. Um, I'm surprised. So I'm surprised I'm that dake. even da ke is a little bit weird here. So I see why that is confusing. It's da ke and demo. It's not just da ke. Da ke demo. Um, um demo meaning. Even was, with this, yeah, Dake so is only. I'm surprised that even now, I'm surprised that even even now that you have your life. The fact But, that can I? Can, I, yeah. I I might have forgotten. So Dake meaning only, right? Only this. Yes. Okay. So even now, even now, you still only alive. I'm surprised. Yeah. So he's basically saying, I'm surprised to the extent that you are still alive, but he's using only in there. Only is kind of like a weird, as I said, translation in this context. Hi. But I don't think there's a better like word for docket. But he's basically, he's kind of stressing that the fact that he still has a life is like, almost like you're, it's, it's, it's crazy. You still have a life since my magical stone should have basically already stolen it. Oh. Can I guess something about this story? Is this yeah. sort of, is it sort of implicate that magic work on the, like it have to take a life force in order for it to operate? Like this magical stone was constantly sucking life or something? Oh, that would be interesting. Uh, Sadly, no. Um, Another <laughs> meaning of dake, I was looking for a better word, can mean to the extent of or merely. Merely. So you, say, so you merely have your life. Even now, you only merely have your life. And I'm surprised because uh, no perhaps to the extent that you have your life, I'm surprised, perhaps. Uh, so stone, my magical stone. Hi. Now now, doing... now this story, this story starting to get interesting. Oh, so interesting. Waka uh, waka. Hi. Uh can you read this kanji? Yes, it's Kiri. Hi. And I'm going to, it's our halfway point. So, okay, hey. see you in two seconds. 